Silicon Angle Media presents The Cube. Covering Alibaba Cloud's annual conference. Brought to you by Intel. Now here's John Furrier. Hello everyone, I'm John Furrier, the co-founder of SiliconANGLE Wikibon on the Cube. We are here for exclusive Cube conversations at the Alibaba Cloud Conference here in Hangzhou, China. We're here with Dr. Wang, who's the chairman of the Alibaba Group Technology Committee, yeah. as well as the founder of Alibaba Cloud, here in the new Museum of Inspiration at the event. Thanks for spending the time with me. Oh, thank you for coming. So before we talk about Alibaba Cloud and uh -huh. the, all the goodness going on here at the conference, talk about this Museum of Inspiration. It is uh, new uh -huh. and it has kind of a display theme. You've kind of walked through time. Yeah. What was the motivation and the inspiration for the museum? Yeah, I think the, the key word for the museum, my inspiration, is really on the inspiration instead of the museum, okay? So I would say that I, that's a true, really, the origin of thinking about that. The first thing is really about, you know, when people, people take a lot of things for granted, okay? And uh, so one of the goals for this museum, it just shows the people they probably see every day. Mm -hmm. But just let them, Yes, wow, okay. That's different, what I, different from what I thought, okay. <laughs> so I think the, a lot of people take for granted, but it's really a great invention, a great you know, human contribution to the whole society. So I think this one thing is really about it, let people understand why we got here today. So that's the first thing. The other thing is really about you know, science and technology. So when people talking about science technology, people often will say, okay, when we can combine science and technology or that. But uh, I don't think that's the right way to describe the relationship between science and te technology. I would say science and technology are really the two sides of the coin, okay? So I really want to see, let people to see uh, two sides instead of mixed it together and got one thing, okay? So that's the two things that's parallel, just like zero and one. There are two things, okay? <laughs> when they yeah. put together in a computer, the amazing things happen, okay? So if you mix the zero and the one as like a half something, then the word is, is, is just not that fun, okay? So I really want to make sure it's the museum of science and art instead of the mixture of science and the, and the art, okay? So that's the, that's the one thing. The other thing is really about the inspiration of future, you know. Most of museum is really about the past. And to show how we, how we have in the past. And uh, with less on the inspiration to, to, to help people to think about the future. So this museum is really, when, when, when we think about everything over here, so we did talk about the past. But we want to make sure people think about the, the the future. So that's the whole yeah. idea about the And music. the computer industry is fairly young if you go back to uh, modern computing. Yeah. But you kind of have a take here about how technology really is embedded in life. Yeah. Talk more about that impact, because that seems to translate to the conference here at Alibaba that technology isn't just about the speeds and the feeds, uh -huh. it's about the integration into life. Yeah. and uh, and. Uh, oh. I think that from this museum, you can see that actually I trace back the origin of all the technology. So when people talking about the computer technology, I really want to talk about the computing technology, you know. And then can trace back, okay, see that actually the human is the first, you know, computing device and just our mother nature, you know, created, you know, for us, okay. So if you look at the same things different, you can really can see the origin of that. So I think in this museum, we talk about two really original things. The first is, uh, is about the, 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 the nature origin of the internet. So when talking about internet, people are talking about our current technology infrastructure of internet. So when we look at the, the, the human history, so I always say that when people walk, you create the internet for, for our Earth, okay? So you can see that a lot of things can trace back. And then with this kind of trace back, you can help us to think about what's going to, what's going to happen next. So the, the trace, the original idea is actually very important I mean, if you're thinking about technology, yeah. Talk about the story of Alibaba Cloud. I mean, that is not 
I mean, it's new. Amazon's had it for around you know, early 2000s. Yeah. And, but you guys came right after Amazon, 2009. Yeah. Uh, still young yeah. and growing. Yeah. How does the Amazon, I mean, the Alibaba cloud take the culture of this inspiration? Mm -hmm. What are some of the design principles of the Alibaba cloud? Yeah, actually, I would say the Alibaba cloud is, is different from the uh, Amazon cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, in a sense, we have different vision about the future. Okay. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, you know, we are put, we are put on, the, on the same umbrella called cloud computing yeah. by media, okay, I would say that. <laughs> so we are different. In a sense, you know, when the Amazon, I actually show great respect to Amazon, okay. But, uh, but when Amazon started cloud computing, we are really talking about uh, the utility. They're talking about okay, how to cut the cost down, okay. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's not, they start with the low cost of IT infrastructure. That's what I, that's what I understand, okay. Well, but when I started Alibaba Cloud, we know that actually cost is important, for mm -hmm. sure. But we know that actually the computing power is more important than the cost, if you're thinking about the big data era, okay. So we started with thinking with, it's the, it's the, it's the data centric cloud computing. When you look at our first brochure, and uh, we put word that over there, that's almost nine years ago. Mm -hmm. So we call it the data centric cloud computing, instead of the IT-centric cloud computing. So this actually is not just an idea difference. It's actually eventually influenced of the underlying technology infrastructure. So our whole underlying technology infrastructure is designed for the data instead of the, just for the IT deployment, yeah. So Jack Ma was talking about this industrial revolution, just digital uh, transformation. Yeah. And what strikes me is you guys have that same art and scientist kind of dynamic artists and science coming yeah. together. Reminds me of the Steve Jobs technology, liberal arts mm -hmm. thinking that spawns new creativity. Yeah. Certainly the iPhone is a great example yeah. of that is one of the many things. But now the new generation is coming together. You have a yeah. big artist focus here at the mm -hmm. event music festival, yeah. not just technology. Yeah. How is that part of the uh, focus at, at the event here, and what does that mean for new developers? Okay, I think it's uh, really the, the core thing behind that. You know, if you if you're thinking about like a technology and our e-commerce, mm -hmm. what's really the one thing behind that is really change the way of people's life. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, so, so computer in that sense, computer is not just technology. It's really the, and something that changes the, the the way of the life of every people. Okay. I think that e-commerce changes the way of life of people. In that sense, they are the, they are the, they are the same, okay? So if you look at the people's life, as I said, it's, they, they won't live just on technology. They won't just live on the arts, okay? See, they, need, you know, they need a life, okay? Life means everything. <laughs> so, so by nature, we have, to, we have to make sure that's consumers, they need, they need something that, that more than just one thing. So I think we are very lucky we understand that. Mm -hmm. And if you're thinking about the young people, uh, and uh, I will give you a few numbers about this conference about young people. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know that in China, we have a very specific word talking about the young people uh, a couple of years ago. We call the Baling Ho. It basically means the generation born after the 80s, okay? Mm -hmm. And then when people talking about the Jiu Ho, that basically means people born after the uh, uh, 90s, okay? And then with people talking about the living hoods, yeah. basically the people talking about people born after 2000, okay. And I think that most of the uh, visitors for this conference are living ho, jiu ho, and, uh, and fa ho. So these are all young, yeah. all young people, you know. The digital that. culture. It's a digital culture. And I, I would rather use my own word in the book, I would say instead of digital, digital, for me, digital uh, generation is, is already an old generation, I would say. And I would like that to call it online generation. They do everything online. And even the last generation do a lot of things digital because digital is everywhere. But, uh, but uh, I want to emphasize it's an, it's an online generation. Do, they do everything online, yeah. Dr. Wong, talk uh, about uh, data. You mentioned that's the key ingredient, it's the fuel for innovation. Uh -huh. And that's impacting the City Brain project that you're you guys are doing. Talk about the city brain and the role of data and how that's impacting the societal users out there. Certainly here in China, the traffic is <laughs> crowded, yeah. but this is just an example of what uh -huh. else is out there. Okay, so, so city brain actually is, uh, 
again, it means a different things based on the perspective. So I think one thing probably is important is about the data. And this is the first time actually, I think, you know, instead of using the big data, it's better to using what I call the data resource. It's a better word than the big data, okay. So I think the, 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 the one fundamental thinking for the city brain is we find the human, I mean, human finally realized actually the data resource is the most precious resource for the city instead of land and water supply. And uh, because we already know that the land is limited, uh, the water supply is limited, okay. So this is, this is very important and we don't view data as not, not essential thing, it's just not part of your IT system, okay. Yeah. But uh, we finally realize actually data, data is part of the city instead of part of your city IT system. So this is, a, I think it's not, it's not a deep work thinking for that, for me, at least for me. And if you, when you got to that and you realize actually today, all the existing IT system cannot, have a no, cannot actually really embrace the data. So IT system is just support people do the work they used to do, okay. And then you realize that, okay, we need an infrastructure to really make the value from the data. Just like we have a water supply system for the, for the city, then you can use the reservoir, okay. Otherwise, the reservoir is, is useful for the, for the city. So I think city brain, uh, just like an, an a water supply system for the data, yeah. and so the city eventually can consume that. And so we start thinking about, okay, it's a new infrastructure for the, for, the, for the city, just like water supply system, just like a power grid, just like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, on the way system. You know, that's, that's, that's how we're thinking about it. Okay, it's the first thing. So the reason we got to the traffic system is this is the problem every city has around the world, okay? And, uh, and, uh, and from my yesterday's presentation, I just joked about we built two roads for the city, okay, just too many. And I think a lot of people realize that's why Boston had the project. They want to get all the road on the, on the surface, okay, yeah. on, on the surface. But it's still road, okay. It's still expensive. We can't, you know how much money yeah. they spend just to just move all the, the road. The big dig, I remember. That was the big dig. Yeah, that's a big dig, okay. I don't think that's, that's good for the transportation system, but I don't think that's a sustainable way for the growth of the city, you know. Yeah. I think probably not made a lot, most of the city don't have the money to do that, okay. Yeah. So what the data, city will want to do, whether we can take the resource of data mm -hmm. and we can optimize every aspect of the city so we can use less resource to support the city growth, okay. So when we start with the traffic, it's just make sure, so you know that when we use the data to optimize the, uh, the traffic lights, the idea behind that actually, we use the data to optimize the time, how to mm -hmm. distribute the time. It's not just the lights, okay? Yeah. And then if you're thinking about, you know, when we show the, the, the eventually, okay, if you have enough data, then we can have less road in, in the city, but still got the, 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 the same, you know, so the Internet of Things is yeah. the hottest trend. Yeah. Obviously, machine learning and artificial intelligence yeah. are part of that, and the cloud powers this new edge of the network, yeah. and the data has to flow. Yeah. So the question that um, a lot of technologists who are architecting these solutions yeah. ask is, how do you make the data go at very low latency? Uh -huh. And that takes compute power. That yeah. takes a lot of technology. Yeah. How does Alibaba Cloud think about the architecture? Also, you have strategic partners like Intel, yeah. obviously, with a lot of compute power. But you got to think differently around making the data move. Yeah. If it's like water, yeah. it needs to flow. Yeah. So real time and is really important. With self-driving cars, real yeah. time is down to the millisecond, nanosecond. Yeah. So yeah. how do you think about that as a, a technologist? Oh, I think the, the, if it goes back to Internet of Things, I think it's still the Internet. Mm -hmm. So I would say eventually, if you think about the word cloud computing and people use edge computing and people mm -hmm. talking about Internet of Things, for me, it's just the, 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 it's just the, the computing on the Internet. So cloud computing is a computing on the Internet, and edge computing is computing on the Internet. Even the IoT is a, is a computer on the Internet. So if you're talking about the data, I think eventually is, is really about the data on the internet. Mm -hmm. so, so it's not the data on the sensor, it's not data on the cloud, yeah. so basically data on the internet. So I would expect that eventually the internet infrastructure 
will be improved significantly. So it's not an improved cloud, it's not improved like edge computing or it's improvement yeah. of the IoT, but it's really together. Cloud. It's a together. Together. So Intel, yeah. I was covering them at Mobile World Congress yeah. earlier in the year, and obviously 5G, yeah. you need the mobile overlay. Yeah. That's super important. Yeah. But you, need, you also have the end-to-end -end inside the cloud. Yeah. So obviously Intel's a strategic partner. Can you talk about the relationship you have with Intel and also your uh, philosophy, technically speaking, with wow. the ecosystem? Because yeah. it's not just Intel, it's everybody yeah. now. Yeah. So there's a lot of people here at this event, yeah. American companies as well as yeah. uh, international companies, who are now going to be part of your ecosystem. Uh -huh. Yeah, actually, the, the, we, we certainly have a very good relationship with the Intel, and, uh, and, uh, and I think we share, same, in some sense, the same vision of that. I think that the number one thing is really about people realize about how important the computing our system. So for me, the, the Intel is not that, uh, a chipset company, OK? The Intel is really the provider of computing power, OK? That, that's what I. That's what I understand. And uh, and uh, and uh, and we can expect you know eventually the whole ecosystem is really about who is going to provide the computing power mm -hmm. and who is going to provide the, the infrastructure to make the data flow okay instead of just an uh, equipment supply because the the eventually the needs for the computing and the needs for the data will be the challenge for every company including the, the Alibaba cloud. We are not. Uh, <laughs> We, we're, we, we're not immune for this challenge, okay, but we, we will feel the same challenge. So what we want to do is really make sure that with all these partners, provide enough computing that for, the, for, the, for the next 10 or 20 years, yeah. and we want to make sure that enough data flow for the next 10 or years. So in that sense, you know, it's not a traditional ecosystem as like you, you do this yeah. and you do that. It's basically how we can work together to really make sure we face, we, we, have, we have the challenge for the, for, the, for the data and the computing in the next 10 years, yeah. Yesterday we covered the news that uh, you guys announced 15 billion in R&D over, yeah. over the next three years, which is a lot of money. Yeah. And it also has a very international and uh, global view, yeah. academics with uh, younger folks. Yeah. Um, Alibaba Cloud is going to be a part of that, I'm assuming. I'd yeah. uh, love to get your thoughts on how you see that uh, intersecting. But the question for you is, cl the cloud world today is moving at very, very fast speed. Yep. We're seeing Amazon, for instance, has been the best in terms yeah. of new announcements every year. I mean, not one or two, like a ton of announcements, yeah. a lot. Yeah. How are you guys going to continue to keep the pace um, to move faster? Uh -huh. Because the, the city brain is a great project, yeah. but it's going to have more evolution. Yeah. It's going to move fast. How are you guys keeping up the pace? Yeah, I think the only way, you, that's not just for Next 10 years, actually, when I started Alibaba Cloud, actually, we take the same philosophy. Actually, the user moves very faster than ours, okay? <laughs> and uh, if you look at the, 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 the users in China, and they move very fast, probably, than anywhere else in the, around the world, okay? And if you use the City Brain project, I would say City Brain project is basically tell the people, we need the computing power more than any other Task okay, and so you really can see you really can see that okay people people want you, so if you can satisfy their demand and somebody else is going to do that okay so it's not something we want to move fast but uh, <laughs> you but have to move fast you have to move faster so so that's why that actually but China is special so I always say China is not just a place for you, for the market, it's China is the place that push you move fast okay. That's, that's probably more important that it's market side, okay. You mentioned data uh, technology and information technology kind of transferring to a new, new world. Yeah. Software is also a big part of it. Software, yeah. you got the compute, obviously with the Intel and the relationships yeah. you have, but software is growing exponentially, certainly in open source. We see yeah. the Cloud Native Foundation here, yeah. uh, the proper Linux Foundation. Yeah. Open source is going to grow exponentially. More yes. so code will be shipping. Yeah. But you have more data <laughs> growing exponentially. Yeah. So software is eating the world, but data is eating software. So yeah. that means you know, software is better, the, greater than, uh, data is greater than software, uh -huh. if you look at it that way. That's super important. As the new architects, uh -huh. um, you, you and I were just talking about how we've been in the industry for a while. Uh -huh. You certainly have an amazing career from uh -huh. Microsoft now uh -huh. at Alibaba. A new generation of architects and developers mm -hmm. are going to create new innovations yeah. around this dynamic of data. Yeah. What's your advice and how do you view that if you were 
you know, 21 years old again right uh -huh. now, uh -huh. and you were going to jump into studies in academic and or field. Okay. It's so a whole it's new a, world. Yeah. I think that for two suggestions, may not, may not necessarily for the young, young generation, but I have to, I would say it's just a suggestion for the young generation to push that happen. Okay. The first thing, you know, that you mentioned about the, the data eat software, but I would put, that, put this in a different perspective. I would say, for the last generation, for the last, uh, uh, last two or three generation, I would say the computer era. We are really talking about computer plus software, okay? That's, that's pretty much everything. <laughs> and, uh, but for, for this generation, I would, I, I would say, okay, we are talking about the computing plus the data. So that, that box is not important, but the computing power is more important. But for yeah. the, for the, for the computer era, the, the box is important. But yeah. the people no, have, there's no box, it's the world. That's it's the, world, the cloud. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's one thing, yeah. okay. And uh, but the, the implication for this is, you know, I would like young generation push is, then we need the new infrastructure. Thinking about the bill has a great vision that have the computer in every home, okay. That's, that's infrastructure. Yeah. But today, when, when you are in the computing plus the data era, the infrastructure is not there, okay? Yeah. So I think the world vision for the Alibaba cloud is to make sure that we have this infrastructure for the next 10 or 20 years so the young generation yeah. can take advantage of that and to do their innovation and invention, okay? Yeah. Just like uh, yeah. computer in every... And, and that's very important. I think yeah. that also speaks to businesses, yeah. how enterprises, I mean, I remember my first startup, I had to buy all this equipment and put uh -huh. it into the telephone closet. Yeah. Now startups and small businesses don't need IT departments. Yeah. This has been a big growth area, certainly for Alibaba yeah. Cloud. Uh -huh. um, and But now all businesses might have a small closet, not a big data center. Yeah. So this is gonna change the nature of business. Yeah. So work and play are, are coming together. Yeah. This speaks to the Museum of Inspiration theme here where yeah. you can have work and play kind of integrate but yet still be separate in an analog digital world. Yeah. What's your vision on this new dimension of everything doesn't have to be just digital, you can have an analog life yeah. uh -huh. and mix it with digital? Yeah, actually I was I just always said, okay, it's, it's not, the world never would have just one side. Always have two sides. <laughs> and the difference is which side is important at a particular time, okay. Yeah. So just like when people talk about digital and, 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 and analog, the analog will exist forever. It's hard for you to kill, okay. <laughs> the, quest, the question is whether you can find the most beauty from the digital at the same time you can find mm -hmm. the most beauty part of the analog. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say that the people just like, you know, when talking about software, people still love the hardware, and people still love the touch. They still love to, to make sure it looks good, okay. <laughs> well, it works, you know, yeah. versus the work, it works good, okay. So I would say we want to make sure people live in a, in a world that with the two sides, instead of just giving them one side of the world. Yeah. You mentioned people still love hardware. There's, I was always say there's always ah. a car drives, but there's still an engine, yeah. and people like to understand yeah. the engine. Uh -huh. There's a maker culture in the United States that's been growing over the past two yeah. decades, and now even more uh, accelerated is yeah. the maker culture because yeah. of the edge and how technology has become part of the fabric of life. Uh -huh. How do you see that maker culture being enabled by more cloud services? Because anyone can make a skateboard or a motorcycle or a computer or a device now, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and powering that with a cloud is an opportunity. How do you view that? And, and, and I would say that eventually, you know, if, 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 you, if, you don't, if we have the broad definition of a cloud, I would say eventually everything the maker hmm. makes will be part of the cloud. So, so, so when talking about cloud, we're talking, really talking about internet. Mm -hmm. So every hardware, every piece of hardware will be part of the internet. So I would say, if you look at the evolution of the internet, internet just not, it's just the backbone at the, at the very beginning. Yeah. I think the first revolution we, the, the internet made is really make sure that every piece of software is a part of the internet. That's how mm -hmm. we got the yeah. World Wide Web, okay. And, uh, and I would say, when talking about the make culture, I would say eventually that every piece of hardware will be part of the internet. So internet won't be complete without the hardware. So that's what I, <laughs> that's why in, 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 in that sense, you know, yeah. the, the, the cloud is, is, is really the essential part of that, yeah. There's some really interesting uh -huh. things happening here in China that I'm excited about. One of them is the 
um, nature of the user base and how uh, close you guys are to that. Uh -huh. In the US, a similar scale, but it's kind of spread out amongst a uh -huh. bunch of other cloud providers. Uh -huh. But the interesting phenomenon, as data grows exponentially uh -huh. and as software yeah. grows exponentially in open source, uh -huh. Things are becoming more decentralized. Yeah. So, without talking about the whole in, uh, initial coin offerings, I know China has banned it and Russia is going to ban it. Other countries are putting a, a clamp down on cryptocurrency. Uh -huh. Putting that aside, uh -huh. there's still blockchain as a potential disruptive yeah. enabler. Yeah. You're seeing decentralization becoming new architecture dynamic because you have to support the growth of these devices at the edge. So distributed computing's been around for a uh -huh, while, uh -huh. but now a decentralized architecture dynamic exists. Okay. How do you yep. steer that technology direction? The, you have to separate from the, the, the distributed architecture versus it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a physical location. Mm -hmm. So I would say, I like the blockchain the idea very much, and I think it would be, it would be the, it, Eventually, it will be part of the internet. It's not just something sit on top of the internet. It will be very fundamental, mm -hmm. just like TCP IP. Open. It's at this low level, okay. So it will be the part of the internet instead of a sit top of the internet. So eventually, internet, in that sense, internet will be very distributed, okay. But uh, by saying that, it's not, it's not saying there's no data center exists, okay. <laughs> you still need, even though the physically, it's in a, yeah. in a one place, <laughs> but... Uh, it's but almost not, decentralized, it's not 100%. A, yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> so, so obviously that would, be, that would be different. So without the internet, without like a new software, that basically, in the, just like PC. PC is really on a, on a single box, yeah. and with a, all the software in a, in a box, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, with this distributed archi architecture, now we, we could have a day center, but everything, Actually, distribute. You cannot trace that. Okay. So if you get out, you know, you, you put like a meeting, uh, 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 a service in a, in, a, in the day center. It's actually distributed over this one meeting yeah. servers. Okay. So in that sense, it's complete distributed. Yeah. Okay? And serverless too is a big trend. Where you know, if you talk about the edge of the network, yeah, you got to move compute to the data sometimes. Yeah. Or have compute on the edge. Yeah. So this is going to be continued growth. You see that as well, right? Yes. And uh, but uh, but. Uh, but I still think, you know, if you use this silicon as a measure for this computing power, okay, I would say, definitely you can see there's more silicons on edge, but I would say whenever you put another one silicon on edge, you probably have to put 100 silicon on the cloud. So <laughs> it's, yes. a, it's still kind it's of a relationship. It's a, re it's a relationship, but just like, you know, the, 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 our, our body is very important, <laughs> yeah. but the brain consumes the most yeah. uh, oxygen, okay? That's the, <laughs> It's important what's in the cloud then. You gotta have the compute and got those ratios. Yeah, and yeah, it depends yeah. on the architecture. Yes, yes. Um, final question for you is, uh, as the folks in Silicon Valley where we're based uh -huh. in Palo Alto um, wanna know is Alibaba, what it means to them. If you have a chance to say a few things about what Alibaba Cloud is to America, what would you like to say? Oh, I would say that actually they, they would just uh, put the cloud computing aside. Just look at what really means behind that. I think the, the cloud, we do have an understanding what cloud computing really means, okay. And, uh, and, uh, and at the very beginning, actually, I, I want to call the company, you know, call it cloud computing company. I would like to call it it's a general computing company. It's really reflect, you know, what is thinking in China. So again, my comments is not just to view China as the market to sell your product, and the view China as the place to inspire having a new product, yeah. yeah. And it's a global world now, the world is flat. Yes, it's just like the United States, it's not, just, it's, it's not, it's yeah. not a place yeah. inspired yeah. The, the, the other people around the world to get a, yeah. to have a new, new, new idea, okay. I think the, 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 the people in China just love new things, okay. They love trying new things. So yeah. it's, it's really can shut your cycle of your innovation. And it's a global collaboration. It's interesting uh, that, uh, that phenomenon is going to continue. Uh, you've done amazing work here. Congratulations on uh -huh. the Museum of Inspiration uh -huh. and uh, the projects you're working uh -huh. on. 
personal question for you. Uh, what are you excited about now? I mean, we kind of joke about how old we are now, but you know, the young people certainly have a great future ahead of them. Yeah. But you have a lot of experience, and you're steering uh, Alibaba's yeah. technology committee across the group, yeah. as well as the cloud, being the founder of the cloud. Yeah. What are you excited about right now, technically speaking? What's the big or or just impact? Okay, What's the I wave? Think, uh, What's the big wave that you I like? I think it's, it's it's very exciting in a couple of things. Okay, three things I would say. The, the first is really about you know just look at technology itself. And, uh, and uh, just like uh, what I described in my book, it's, 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 uh, it's really, really exciting in your life if you can see the internet plus the computing and plus data could sit together, okay? Yeah. You know, just like you have this engine, you have the airplane, a couple of things sit together in the way area. This is a very, very exciting area. So this is not just about an, an, an era, new, a technology era. It's an era that all things happen at the same time. So that's very exciting. That's one thing, though. Okay. The second thing is really about the city around over here. And uh, I think the, 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 the Alibaba, you know, Hanzo is, is, is just a very special for Alibaba. But I think it's special for the profits or for the, for the other company as well. So this place is a very special. Yeah. And I just give you an idea where you are okay. Uh, you know, this, this area has the most networked uh, river in the, in the past, okay. If you look at the map, it's like internet, okay. <laughs> so I would say that all the people over here, they, this, the mindset is just an internet mindset. It even goes back 100, 200 yeah. years ago because the river is the only way for, the, for them to yeah. travel, for the communication. That's the data back then. That's just what they say. <laughs> yeah, so if you look at the map, so this is, this, so this is very exciting. Yeah. The other thing is about the, the Alibaba. You know, for me, the, 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 the Alibaba, you know Alibaba, the, the, we have a very broad business, okay, you can, you can feel that. But uh, from technology point of view, that basically means it's the place you can touch every aspect of technology. So it's very, you know, in, in Stone just had a very slight, you know, very... You have a great service field. area, aperture, to look at the yes. impact of yes. life. Yeah, so you're thinking about the three things together, and uh, uh, it's hard to, it's hard to say, okay, the, the, the you know, you, you, you better to get excited, okay? Yeah. That's a, it's a great time to be in technology, yeah, 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 isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and entertainment, e-commerce, web services, the new... Yeah, it's a, so for me, the... When I work on the City Burn project, yeah. it just, uh, it's just the beginning of machine learning. So okay. a lot of people, they are fighting for like, a, you know, when people talk about speech recognition, they are, they are fighting for the last one meter for the, mm -hmm. for the, for the speech recognition. But if, yeah. if you're talking about City Brain, it's the, it's the world, you know, the most big AI project. Yeah. It's just the beginning. Yeah. So we just, we just start with the 1%. I it must not be a lot of fun. I mean, you got a lot yeah. of data to work with. You have real life integration. It's super exciting. Yes. When are we going to see you in Silicon Valley? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I pay regularly to Silicon Valley two or three times every, every year. Yeah. And, uh, we probably see you sometime early next year, though. No? That's great. Well, yeah. thank you very much for okay. the time. Appreciate I'll, it. I'll thank okay. you for coming to the conference and coming to the museum, you know. Thank you yeah. very much thank for you. your great inspiration. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you.